Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another roundup of the latest PS4 and PS5 jailbreak news updates over the past week. Let's go ahead and dive straight into it here. So in one of my previous videos, I showed you guys how to use remote play on the PS5, thanks to a new payload released by Idlesauce that will allow you to get the pin code as well as the account ID as a base64 string, which is required for third-party remote play clients like Chaki or Chaki NG. So the payload gives you the account ID along with the pin code so that you can connect a remote device and the amount of time before the code expires. Now, since then, we've also had some updates to this. We have a homebrew version that's also been created by John Tornblum. So you can basically use this with the homebrew launcher. And it's just more convenient than using the payload because it just stays on screen all the time instead of being in a notification and you'll always have access to it in the homebrew launcher. So all you do is run it. It's called link dev. All you have to do is run it in the homebrew launcher and then it will give you again the account ID, the pin code, as well as the amount of time before it expires in the homebrew launcher and then you can connect up a remote device. So that's a new feature that's been added since I made that video. And if you want to know how to offline activate your account and then use this to pair a remote device to access it through remote play, then check out the previous video I've made, which I'll leave linked down in the video description. Now, sticking with the homebrew launcher for a moment, John Tornblum's also released a version of RetroArch that can be loaded from the homebrew launcher. So at the moment, I haven't seen anybody actually boot any games with this. And I believe there might be some tweaks that need to be made to the RetroArch cores to allow them to work with the PlayStation 5, but the actual application so far is running on the PS5 through the homebrew launcher. So that's something to keep an eye on. Hopefully it gets developed further so that we can access more cores and load multiple games with this version of RetroArch. Another useful thing to come from the homebrew launcher is that we also have Master S9, who's released a handy tool to upload all of the homebrew apps through FTP for you. Just makes it more convenient than doing this manually. So essentially it's a little program that you run, you enter the IP address and port number of your PS5 when you're running the FTP payload and then connect to your PS5 from the application and then you can select what homebrew app you want to upload and it will upload the files for you so that the application will be accessible in the homebrew launcher. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier but hopefully a future version will have an upload all option so you can just upload every single one at once if you want to have them all installed because uh, right now you just have to pick, you know, one by one to get them uploaded. And in other news, there's been a database leak from game developer Red Barrels. Apparently a 1.3 terabyte uh, tar file was leaked, according to Zeko. And included in this was a newer version of the PS5 software development kit, which has now been uploaded to the Internet Archive. I don't know how long it will actually be on there, but for now anyway, at the time of recording, it's still available. So this will be useful for people with test kits and developers who want to discover any new features added in this new SDK. And of course, access to newer publishing tools for creating package files and many, many other useful features. Now, I did also come across this kind of test build of Gold Hen that appears to be testing a new feature that will disable uh, the PP Pwn exploit once Gold Hen is already running. This is just, again, for stability, most likely because certain automatic Pwn devices like the Luxfox Picos and various other devices that automatically run the jailbreak for you. Sometimes might try to run the jailbreak while you're still running Gold Hen when it's already jailbroken for whatever reason, because the device gets rebooted or because the console gets recovered from rest mode and it thinks it's a reboot and it tries to run the exploit again. And if something goes wrong during that process, it will most likely crash the console. And some people would be attributing that to Gold Hen instability when it's actually their device trying to re-jailbreak the console when it's already jailbroken. So I believe this option is just to essentially block the PPPoE connection or somehow prevent uh, the PPPone exploit from running on the console when it's already got Gold Hen loaded and it's already jailbroken, uh, which would be a handy feature to have added. Also, homebrew developer Lappy has finished his port of Hellblade 2. This is something I covered in a previous news update where we have Hellblade 2 as video files that you can essentially play through through these kind of quick time events on the controller. It's like a homebrew version of the game that you can run. And up until now, there were a few chapters that were added, but we now have all six chapters added, which means you can play through the whole game from start to finish with this homebrew version. We also have some updates to the remote Lua loader. So inside the dev branch, we have a new FTP server that has been added. And I've seen a lot of hype around this online. So the way that this works, of course, is we've got the Lua loader that runs through a save file in games that run the Artemis engine and then we can send Lua scripts over the network for it to execute. 
This is essentially like a user mode or user land exploit. Obviously, we can't really do anything with it until we get a new kernel exploit, but this will be useful to have in our back pocket for any future kernel exploits that come out. And of course, it could also potentially be used to try and trigger the current UMTX kernel exploit that exists for the PS5. So that's the situation we're in with this at the moment. It's not super useful on its own. So the way the FTP server works is you send the Lua script over the network to run with the Lua loader. It will then execute it, at which point you can then connect an FTP client. So the setup for this is a little bit weird because it doesn't allow you to use normal FTP. So if you want to connect using a client like FileZilla, you'll need to go to the site manager and create a new site, then enter the PS5's IP address and the port number 1337, change the FTP type to plain FTP unsecure, and then also change the login type to anonymous. And then in the transfer settings, you also want to set it to active mode and not passive or auto. And that should allow you to connect using this FTP server. However, it only gives you access to the sandboxed location. That's where there's been some confusion because a lot of people have been hyping this up on Twitter and not really adding the additional context of the fact that this is not root access FTP. This is only sandboxed FTP where the FTP is running within the sandbox. So it only has access to the file system that of that sandbox and not the larger file system of the whole console, which you require a kernel exploit in order to be able to do. So that's the difference between, you know, root access FTP and sandboxed FTP. It could still be useful for the developers of this because, of course, the Lua loader is also running within that sandbox. So if you transferred certain files uh, onto the sandbox, you could then potentially execute it with the Lua loader. So there could be some uses for this. So anyway, you can also set this up on the PS5 in the same way. It does work on the latest firmwares, but it is just sandboxed FTP access. Uh, so yeah, anyway, moving on from that, Lightning Mods has also announced that he is planning a Christmas release for ETA Hen version 1.9b. This was pretty much expected that he was probably going to hold it off until Christmas and release it around then. I also suspect we'll probably see a new version of Items Flow come out around the same time because they typically go hand in hand. A new version of ETA Hen releases with a new version of Items Flow and that will hopefully include the decryptor that will allow us to decrypt games like Demon Souls and other games that couldn't previously be decrypted with the current versions of the decryptor that we're using, as well as, of course, those game dumps that I've shown in my previous videos of uh, Demon Souls and Devil May Cry 5 will probably also be released around the same time. So yeah, that is good news. We have confirmation that that stuff is coming. Also, Lightning Mods has shared some more interesting footage, particularly footage here showing modified console overlays and a kernel hook for unlimited test kit activation time as well as hidden overlays. So we, we don't know if a lot of this stuff will end up coming to retail consoles. Obviously the test kit activation is just for test kits, uh, which could certainly be useful for people who have test kit consoles if it properly activates them, uh, because a lot of the functions of a test kit are disabled unless the kit is actually activated and it can be quite difficult to get a activated test kit. So if you are actually able to activate the test kit quite easily with ETA Hen, that could certainly be very useful for developers. Now the overlays, we might see some of these overlays come to retail consoles as well. Some of them look like overlays that are just for test kits and might not be available on retail consoles. But you know, with stuff like the Orbis toolbox that we've seen for the PS4 in the past, it is possible to get some of these overlays working on a retail console. So hopefully we'll see some of this stuff potentially come to retails. And the final thing to mention here is there's also been some improvements made to the PS3 WebKit exploit. Version 150B by developer ABC. So this is the WebKit exploit that we use to load the jailbreak pretty much for any situation where you're loading the jailbreak from a web browser. You're pretty much using the PS3 exploit in most cases. If you're using like 6.72 on PS4, 9.00 on the PS4, if you're running the UMTX exploit on the PS5 or the original IPv6 exploit on the PS5, you are probably using the PS3 WebKit exploit as the entry point to run that kernel exploit. And there has been some improvements made to it here. Now, these improvements primarily affect the PS4. So, for example, you have a much higher success rate. Apparently, it's about 100% success rate uh, with the PS3 WebKit exploit on the PS4, and it runs a lot quicker. So there's been some major improvements for running it on the PS4. Now, this is just the WebKit portion of the exploit that's being improved here, not the kernel exploit. So you can still run into the console crashing or the web browser crashing when you get to the kernel exploit portion. This is just the initial 
parts when you run the jailbreak where you often get not enough free system memory errors or you get errors like PS3 has stopped working or has crashed and you have to manually reload it. That stuff should be pretty much non-existent on the PS4 now with this improvement. Uh, once it gets you know propagated around all the different WebKit exploits, all the different hosts, uh, it should be much improved. It doesn't really improve the PS5 that much in terms of stability. It still seems to be about the same. But the benefits on PS5 seem to be that it doesn't crash as often. And when it does crash, it doesn't actually panic the browser to the point where it requires you as the user to reload the page manually. Instead, it will just kind of refresh itself and try and run it again. And every time it fails, it will just retry by itself without you having to intervene, which just makes things a little bit more convenient when running uh, the WebKit exploit on your PS4 or PS5. But still, it's nice to see that we've actually had some improvements there, especially since PS3 was already a really good WebKit exploit in terms of how quickly, uh, when it does execute successfully, how quickly it does that and get straight on to running the kernel exploit. So, so yeah, improvements definitely appreciated. So anyway, that's it for this roundup of PS4 and PS5 jailbreak news updates. Hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.